Here's a few comments on fault tolerance and other related um, latency type issues, synchronicity constraints. This slide points out an important issue, which is slightly controversial, which is what is an appropriate service level. Um, and that availability is the uh, is obviously nothing is perfect. There have been some well-known cases like Netflix went 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 off when the Amazon lost service, and um, you express this guarantee how important, how actual operationally important that is. I, I think it's still a little early to know how we want to do this, and. Um, there are some issues of performance because when you do these virtualized server consolidations, you're sharing a node between multiple applications. And so that doesn't, it's not so easy to guarantee that node gets a particular performance because an application can be sensitive to disk I.O., to memory use, CPU use, and network use. And you really can't guarantee that you will get, you, you can give somebody two cores and maybe dedicated access to those cores. But if the other six cores on that node are being uh, um, saturating the memory, those two cores can't actually do anything. So there is some important issues here which I don't think are very well understood. And I'm not certain they're critical at this stage, because I think people get adequate enough performance. Because what you really care about is your performance average over time. So the fact that your two nodes got messed up by the six other nodes for some period of time or is um, is um, unfortunate, but maybe what the counts is the average level of messing up. And as long as that's small, then you're okay. Uh, so here is some examples of for Azure of the service level agreement. We have the computer. Connect the, here's the guarantee on connectivity, 99.95%. Our computer center just went down yesterday in a storm. So, you know, all systems have some problems. Um, and ours was a highly, highly uh, fault tolerant system. Uh, we monitor, the Azure monitors every instance and it initiates corrective action if a node is dead. Uh, the storage is replicated so that um, if, it, uh, if it fails, then it just goes to a different place. Um, databases are backed up and monitored. And uh, your service bus and uh, endpoints will have external connectivity. And your messaging will um, was, is, a, is essentially guaranteed at some level. Again. These are not hugely uh, high numbers here. These are 0.1% unreliability or 0.05% uh, here. Those are quite serious failures. But well, can't, what, as I said, you are, you are forced to develop your software to be fault tolerant. Um, here's a much nicer uh, reliability S3. Uh, and again, Amazon doesn't actually tell you what it does. I think the rumor is for the typical S3, it um, starts six times, and uh, this gives you uh, this huge uh, reliability effect, and um, and then average over a year the availability of the objects uh, at any one time. Then they have this reduce. Then they found out that maybe some data really wasn't that important because you can actually rerun it if, if it's a disaster. So they offer that somewhat cheaper reduced redundancy storage, which has um, lower, uh, which has a bigger chance of being totally destroyed. And um, it's just done. I mean, one way to do that is install this a lot of times, say six, and this not so many times, such as uh, four times. And I say, you might use this version if you could regenerate the data on demand if you had to, because then it would be better to pay less for your storage. Um, when you look at fault tolerance, data is relatively easy to make fault tolerance. You, in some sense, replicate it in, 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 uh, in a few times. Um, 
But then programs are not so easy, because when your programs are executing, they're sending information between each other, and it is not simple to just um, replace the, rerun the programs, because you're not quite certain uh, what uh, messages they uh, were sending, what they've received, and what data they've written to disk. So once you have a data set which is finished, you can then worry quite straightforwardly about its fault tolerance. But running programs are not so easy. And the only easy way I know is actually more user-oriented. Uh, the user's instructed to save the state of his program every now and then. And um, that's, that's <coughs> particularly easy to say MapReduce, because MapReduce is all communicate by disk. So if you capture the result of a set of map processes on that disk, that's a natural fault tolerance model, because the disk is easy to make fault tolerance. Well, the only issue here is it's rather slow, because everything has to be written to disk. But then MapReduce is designed for a platform for which that disk um, overhead is not important. In parallel computing, this becomes very tricky, uh, because uh, you have multiple processes uh, running together. When one process breaks, all processes uh, have to wait for it. So uh, in some sense, the cost of a failure has multiplied the number of parallel processes. On a modern supercomputer, that'd be a million way. So um, the, co the, power, the necessary cost of synchronization and um, uh, the, the fact that we have processes synchronizing makes the cost of fault tolerance higher for parallel processing. So loosely coupled processes are actually somewhat easier to make fault tolerant, and that's what clouds are aimed at. And so that's one reason HPC clusters are actually a big effort is to make them not to have faults, because the impact of a fault in high performance computing is pretty serious. You're running a million, a million uh, cores on a single job. If one of those cores breaks, then the other million minus one cores wait. So that's not good. Some commercial applications, are, if there are banking applications, they better not lose data. You'll be rather unhappy if um, your know, bank said, well, unfortunately, 1% of our uh, people's money was lost because um, we had this crash. So commercial app banking applications have to be completely uh, fault free. Um, but uh, <coughs> some other applications, such as uh, Netflix applications, the recommender engines, and you're looking at all the ratings to predict a new recommendation. If you miss out 0.1% of, of the ratings, or if you're doing a web search and you miss out 0.1% of the web, it will make very little difference. Of course, if the 1% you missed out was important, so if it was the Wikipedia, Wikipedia um, entry for this particular query, then that will, you'll notice it. But in general, you will not miss out the important parts. So a lot of the Web 2.0 cloud applications are pretty fault tolerant, and they do not need to worry too much. So that is dramatically different from the weather simulation, because the nature of the equations governing the weather imply lots of correlations. You cannot uh, do a weather simulation and leave out the weather at uh, Bloomington and try to get Martindale right, where those are. Uh, Martyrs will write those are nearby cities. You can't do that. All of these are highly coupled pr problem, and the mathematics of them are not very fault tolerant, and you cannot just drop part of the system. 